that. Good. Well, as the founding director of the Insiders Outsiders Project, it's my very great pleasure to admit you to this evening's event. Um, there is a sadness attached to it, which I will talk about in a minute. But let me just, for those of you who don't know about the Insiders Outsiders um, Festival and now the ongoing online events program, let me just say a little bit more about that. Um, it was a small idea I had way back, I think, in 2000 end of 2017 that grew and grew and grew and took the form initially of um, a year long nationwide arts festival um, designed to pay tribute to celebrate the huge and diverse contribution and indeed pervasive long lasting contribution of refugees from Nazi dominated Europe to this country's culture. And then of course in March 2020, I don't have to tell you what happened, COVID hit, but fortunately for us, the festival was coming more or less to an end anyway. And it seemed a natural sort of um, sequel, if you like, to go online. And I'm more than gratified at the sort of wealth of material that we're able still to continue presenting, albeit in online format. Now, let me, sorry, let's just give me a minute. I'm just going to let in um, a few more latecomers. Um, one of the primary aims of the festival was to bring into the light, if you like, less known figures, not just to sort of concentrate on the better known figures like Kokoschka or indeed Ludwig Meidner, who I think Simon is going to allude to um, in, in the fine arts that is, um, but to bring to the British public's attention those of tremendous accomplishment of real originality and power like Ernst Neuschul, who deserve to be much, much, much better known. So it's my great pleasure that we're holding this event today. Um, the sadness comes with the fact that I need to share with you the original um, plan was to include Misha Norland, the artist's younger son, in the discussion. And as Simon will testify, we had a very lively uh, and cordial Zoom meeting with him really not very long ago. And then literally just about a week later, his wife contacted me to say, sadly, Misha had just died the night or the early morning before. So this is dedicated to Misha as much as to his father. I have noticed, I couldn't help noticing with some pleasure, although I didn't feel it appropriate to sort of ask any members of the family whether they would be able to attend tonight, but I have noticed various uh, family members with the surname Norland who are with us. And while I don't want to put you on the spot at all, um, it's lovely to have you here. And of course, both Simon and I will be absolutely delighted if perhaps when Simon has given his talk, you might like to chip in in a more personal uh, kind of way but no no pressure but it would be of course a real a real honor if you could do so lovely so let me carry on by introducing Simon briefly and then he'll cut to the chase um I've known Simon for years and years and have greatly admired what he does he studied fine art and art conservation originally and for a substantial number of years was the curator of fine art at what I think officially was called Leicester Arts and Museums Services but better known as the New Walk Art Gallery, now I think renamed again the Leicester Art Gallery, but as some of you may already know, it's one of England's best kept secrets. It has the most fantastic collection of early German, early 20th century German art in the country, and not enough people know about it. And I can't help also adding to that, that actually one reason why it's there is very much tied up with the story of one German Jewish refugee family, the Hess family, who were important collection, collectors in Erfurt in Germany, and then when it came to it, had to leave and Leicester was the great beneficiary. Um, Simon is now a freelance writer and lecturer on all manner of related themes, uh, and he's spoken on our other occasions for Insiders Outsiders, and I also ought to add that he wrote a tremendous essay on the history of Leicester's German Expressionist collection for the Insiders Outsiders companion volume, which focuses on the visual arts. And actually in a minute, I'm going to put some links um, for you um, in the chat that you might like to pursue. Um, most recently in terms of publications in 2020, he published a really fascinating book called The Painter's Hidden Masterpiece, which is based on a true and almost unbelievable story of a non-Jewish Bavarian realist painter called Johannes Matthäus Pultz, whose real masterpiece was an anti-fascist, anti-war triptych called very graphically, Thou Shalt Not Kill. And I won't say any more, again, I will provide the link that will tell you more about that book, but I strongly recommend it. It is really an extraordinary story, very compellingly told. 
Lovely, just a few um, reminders of the practicalities, which I'm sure you all know absolutely by heart by now. If you wouldn't remind, staying muted throughout, there will be a chance to ask questions via the um, chat function, if you wouldn't mind, uh, whenever you feel so moved, um, to type in your questions in the first instance. We are recording the event, so it might perhaps be a good idea also to turn off your cameras to avoid distraction while, um, while Simon is talking. And um, yes, I think that's probably enough for now. Simon, over to you. Um, good evening, everyone. I uh, hope you can all hear me clearly. It's all, um, all good. Thank you to uh, Monica Bomdushan, creator of Insiders Outsiders, uh, the, the wonderful festival of uh, the story of emigre Europeans who came from Nazi Europe and uh, enriched so much the life of, of uh, Britain. Um, so this opportunity to give tonight's talk is on the painter uh, Ernest Neuschel, uh, born 1895 and lived to 1968. Title of the talk, Visions from a Sharp-Edged Eye. Um, he certainly experienced highs and lows in his career and for a glittering period in 1920s, Weimar Germany was recognized as one of the leading artists of the Neue Sachlichkeit or New Objectivity Movement. Now, I'm just waiting for the... Um, Is it not going forward, Simon? I um, want to go forward. Just try yeah. clicking. It's a little trick that I've learned. Just try literally clicking with your cursor on the top left of your screen. It often okay. just sort of Let's gets it that. moving. Not, not in, just, just anywhere almost. On, on, well, there there we are. It okay. works. I don't know why, but it works. <laughs> well, that's... Let's leave it... Um, I've double clicked. So it, it's gone forward to uh, Neuschel's... Uh, parents um, and he was born in Alsig Bohemia in 1895 um, originally part of the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire um, but later to become uh, Czechoslovakia so he trained in Prague and Vienna but moved uh, to Krakow in Poland at the outbreak of war to avoid conscription and he held his first solo exhibition in 1919. Um, as a young man he possessed a lean physique and very edgy good looks and a charisma which commanded uh, attention. In the 1920s, he achieved regular exhibitions and press coverage um, and also had a remarkable dance partnership with a talented nightclub dancer, stage name Taka Taka, of whom more later. Neuschel's themes encompassed the unemployed, the workers of the shipyards and the steel mills, the habitués of the bars and nightclubs and revealed a keenly observational gaze upon Weimar life. In 1932, he became Professor of Fine Arts at Berlin's Academy of Fine Art, also chairman of the anti-fascist artist group, the November Group. In 1933, however, an exhibition of his paintings was closed by the Nazis. Because of his Jewish birth and radical political opinions, Neuschel also lost his teaching post, and in March 1933, he returned to Aussich. A Moscow visit in 1935 resulted in a double portrait of Stalin and Dimitrov. In 1936, he left the country, which was fast approaching uh, Stalin's anti-Jewish purges. In 1937, an exhibition he held in Aussig was vandalized by Nazi toughs. And in 1938, he emigrated with his second wife and child to Great Britain on the last train to leave Czechoslovakia. He found a new home in Mumbles near Swansea, England, and this new period in a strange foreign country also saw a major stylistic change towards abstraction, but still revealed Neuschel, the questing, searching artist. In 1959, a one-man exhibition was held at the Betzalel National Museum in Jerusalem, and in 1966, a major retrospective exhibition in Berlin, with the title From the New Objectivity to the New Non-Objectivity. -Obj and he died in London in 1968. In 2001, 2002, an important retrospective exhibition in Brno and Regensburg brought together works from public and private collections in the first major survey of Ernst Neuschel's life and work. There are few works in public collections in this country, Leicester and Swansea having examples, and Neuschel remains little known today, a fate shared by so many who were driven to leave Nazi-occupied Europe in the 1930s. 
His life and work, however, are slowly returning to critical attention, however, a process to be warmly welcomed. The Neuschel family um, were respected members of uh, the city's Jewish community um, in uh, Alsig on the Elbe in northern Bohemia, then a part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In 1918, North Bohemia would become part of the new Czechoslovak Republic. The young Neuschel attended the state high school in Alsig but left without a degree. He pursued fine art studies in Prague between 1913 and 1915. Um, he was uh, an external student as his father was against the plan. He wanted his son to study medicine and refused to finance him, but the resourceful Neuschel uh, found ways to earn money to support his studies, uh, becoming a house painter. Here we have a self-portrait from 1915 in the collection of the Zudowski Museum in Prague. So here Neuschel, uh, a young man at 1915, uh, presenting himself as uh, the artist he intends to become. He's already aware of um, the effect and finish of his work on the viewer and evokes the soft texture of his shirt in multiple sinuous lines and the decorative patterning of his trousers given similar treatment. He went to Vienna, where he attended the KK Grafische Lechenstalt. The outbreak of war, World War I, however, and the looming threat of being drafted into military service prompted him to drastic action. He starved himself to appear malnourished and feigned epilepsy, even on one or two occasions, uh, attacking the army docks in white coats who wanted to send him to the front. Luckily, they didn't succeed. Um, and he moved from Vienna to uh, at Krakow in 1916. Neuschel continued his studies at the Art Academy in Krakow, which at that time belonged to Austria-Hungary. He took lessons from the Art Nouveau artist Josef Mehoffer. A diary from this time with his own poems and quotes by artists and philosophers, as well as his own thoughts on them, identify Neuschel as a seriously searching young person, interested in ideological and art theoretical questions and answers. Here we have a couple of uh, uh, photographs from Neuschel's uh, art college days. A small number of these photographs survive um, uh, from this time, 1916-17, uh, showing Neuschel posing in photographs which include um, artist life models and student friends. Um, also on the right hand side he's painting with companions on the roof of the academy. In the group photo Neuschel um, they're not ideally focused, but you can see he's, he's um, uh, rather lasciviously clutching the life model uh, on the far left. Uh, but he's also holding in his other hand um, a cord, perhaps linked to a camera shutter. So he's actually directing, uh, directing the scene itself. Uh, these photographs were indulged, let's say, at the time within art academies. The students almost 100% male at this time, posing in tableaus of paintings. Um, with life models and uh, friends and other props, often with their tutors. <laughs> the Prague years, uh, now 1918 to 1920. In the summer of 1918, uh, Neuschel went to Prague, where he continued his studies at the Academy of Fine Arts with Franz Thieler. Uh, these two works, collectively known in a group as My Latest Pictures, um, show Neuschel working in a style both expressive and with symbolist, perhaps romantic influences. In one image on the left, a nude man and woman embrace, standing between slender trees in a stylized landscape with a distant lake. The woman's body is slowly turning, her arms seem to be reaching for an unseen object, perhaps the forbidden apple of Eden. In the second, a bearded figure in hooded robes bestrides stony ground horizon tightly and artificially curved like a stage set. Both are given the title, My Last Work. The artist is perhaps uncertain. The work shows early promise, but this powerful socio-critical dimension found in later works is not yet evident. In August 1918, he met a young woman in Prague who would quickly impact his personal life in dramatic fashion. 
This was the Dutch Javanese dancer Taka Taka, real name Lucy Linden Manavu, uh, born in 1890, uh, dates to 1980. She had grown up in Berlin and would later become his wife. Here she is as a young woman uh, on the left around 1918 and on the right uh, 1920 uh, a voyage to uh, the North Sea near uh, uh, Bremen um, with Neuschel and Takataka Taka very much at ease in each other's company. Neuschel was immediately entranced by Takataka Taka and the pair soon embarked on a relationship. Western European society through a colonial prism had developed a fascination with the notion of the exotic and the otherness of non-Western societies. The German expressionists sought alternatives to the tensions of urban industrialization, finding inspiration in the art and culture of the South Seas. The dance performances of Josephine Baker, the first person of color to become an entertainment star, entranced and captivated Parisian audiences. Her show La Revue Negre in Germany in the late 20s, uh, when the dancer, free from segregation and prohibition in her homeland, played on the stereotype of the exotic wild woman to perform her dance Sauvage. Writers, artists, designers and choreographers now actively search for new creative pathways and partnerships outside the Western canon. Here's Taka Taka. Um, <clears throat> wearing one of her many stage costumes and on the right um, in the later dance partnership, which would become so successful, um, Taka Taka and Neuschel in the character of Yoga Taro, um, he who knows yoga. Uh, Neuschel produced sketches, photographs and paintings of her and dance and uh, very much at ease in each other's company and um, the connections that they forged. In July 1990, Neuschel had his first solo exhibition with 39 works in Weiner Salon um, in Prague. Among the works shown were dramatic canvases, including a Tantalos uh, shown on the left, painted at the end of Neuschel's studies in Krakow. This is from 1918. Um, so 95 by 76 and a half centimetres and now in the Zidowski Museum in Prague. On the right uh, from the same grouping of paintings is Messias or uh, Messiah. Um, and uh, it is thought Neuschel himself modelled uh, for the two figures in each painting. Uh, Tantalos, of course, the doomed figure from Greek mythology punished by Zeus to be imprisoned in Hades in a pool of water from which he could never drink, and a tree laden with fruit that he could never eat. Messias on the right, uh, now part of the collection at Leicester Museums, um, is Neuschel adopting um, in character uh, the Messiah, no less. He is stripped to the waist and he gazes at the view with an almost manic intensity, simultaneously jabbing a forefinger into his chest in a powerful gesture, confirming his identity and existence. A golden pathway curves away to a distant set of blue mountains with prismatic stylized light rays overhead. Neuschel, like the Brooker artists in 1905 in Dresden, now seems to be asking us to choose him to lead us in a renewed artistic adventure into unknown lands. A letter of recommendation from his professor shows that Neuschel intended to continue his studies at the Academy of Fine Arts in Berlin at the end of 1919. But these plans were put on hold because he now chose to travel to Java with his future wife by the East India Company. Java in the early 20th century remained an important colony in the former Dutch East Indies. The colony was experiencing change and tensions of varying levels, traditional customs brushing up against new forms of dress, work, travel and commerce. There were also stirrings of independent Ind Indonesian statehood in nationalist circles. And here the couple attended uh, traditional Javanese dance performances and visited Indonesian religious temples and shrines. Photos of Taka Taka in um, a costume and also uh, a wonderful um, 
a press release uh, advertising the Javanese dancers Takataka Taka and Yoga Taro. Um, inspired by um, his early artistic success, uh, Neuschel redoubled his efforts to forge a creative dance partnership with Takataka. Taka. And he designed uh, the costumes shown here. And she performed in July 1921 first at the Kursaal of the Lucerne Theatre. And on June the 24th, 1922, Neuschel and Takataka Taka married in Berlin. And in the following years, she became his most important partner, wife, muse and model. In 1922, Neuschel held his first solo exhibition in Rome. From August 1922, Takataka Taka and Ernst Neuschel embarked on an extensive and lengthy tour visiting cities across Europe. USA and Canada as a Javanese dance couple with their program Asian Fantasies. The couple received a special invitation during their tour from the Infanta Isabella of the Sp Spanish royal family to give a command performance for the King of Spain, after which they received gifts of jewellery. A special tour poster shown here included tour performances until May 1923, after which invitations came to tour North America where the couple appeared in numerous venues, including Greenwich Village and the Hippodrome Theatre in New York. Performance posters adorned trams and billboards, and the New York Times noted the sensational temple dancers from Java, Takataka Taka and Yoga Taro, seem to have captured New York, judging by the ovations they received yesterday. Uh, De Weltspiegel. Uh, the World Speaks uh, newsletter um, with uh, front page uh, photos of uh, Yoga Taro and Takataka. Taka. These successful years of performance with Takataka Taka are an expression of Neuschel's extraordinarily versatile talent. Like his wife, he was enthusiastically celebrated as a dancer. He found the time also during tour breaks to paint um, and take part in photography and other exhibitions and produced images including bullfighting scenes, ordinary life and nude studies. Here we have Beach near Beeritz from 1923, uh, oil on card, uh, approximately 44 and a half by 57 and a half centimetres at the Lieberec Regional Gallery Collection. So at this time, no modern hotel complexes simply a Spartan landscape with the waves uh, beating across uh, as forces of nature um, slowly eroding the cliff which is very very dark and the only habitations the uh, the fishermen's houses a wonderful uh, painting from this period here um, the Spaniard uh, from 1923 and stone breaking or stone quarrying um, from 1925 approximately one by one and a half meters um, many of these uh, works <coughs> uh, either are in uh, foreign collections public collections or have been lost during Neuschel's forced displacement and emigration um, from Europe into uh, to England. So sadly, many, many are lost. But fortunately, Neuschel was very diligent um, in keeping wonderful uh, photo albums, which remain in the family. Uh, Khalil Norland has a wonderful collection of uh, photographs, as does um, uh, the, uh, the wider family. And so these images provide a wonderful window into the artist's life and creative inspiration. Carousel from 1925. So there's multiple focal points energizing this work and subtle interactions and glances of the children of varying ages as they gather around the carousel and forms of horses and adult figures um, combined in a wonderful dynamic image. Neuschel consciously adopted a harder edge technique in a number of his works during the 1920s and harvesting Uh, shown here, uh, 1926, um, reveals the rhythmic movement and teamwork of the women, including those on the cart, and it creates a pleasing flow to the composition. Uh, 
Weary Women from 1925. Again, a sense of observational detachment characterizes uh, this canvas. The identities of the women are uh, unknown. Post-World War I saw the arrival of women in the workplace in a big way into offices, factories, hospitality, and, and as self-employed workers in a variety of professions. Wages were often minimal and hours long. Relief could be found in clubs, bars, and the fast growing cinemas emerging everywhere, where women could now freely congregate, unaccompanied by men as they chose. The two companions appear dressed for a night out, but now simply slump, awaiting transport home. Neuschel dispassionate as the women's identity, but revealing a wry compassion in his awareness of their weary reality. Now painting between dance engagements in Paris, Amsterdam, Rome, Madrid, New York and Montreal and many other European cities, uh, Neuschel and Taka Taka lived an exciting and creative life. Sadly, however, an anti-Semitic article against the work of the 28-year-old artist was published during the first exhibition in his hometown, Ausig. Unfortunately, I don't know further details about this article, but it was a sad foretaste of future events to come. In January 1926, the couple's last appearance took place in the Winter Garden in Berlin. In that year, Neuschel became a member of the November Group in Berlin, with whom he had several exhibitions in the following years. Since its foundation in, in uh, 1918, the group had become a focal point of Berlin's cultural life and a, a vigorous opponent of fascism. And at this time, he also made the acquaintance of the Jewish painter Ludwig Meidner, who had begun a series of works titled Apocalyptic Visions, um, scenes of urban ruin and devastation in his Berlin studio from 1912-1913. Here's one of the earliest in the series, again simply titled Apocalyptic Vision from 1912 in the collection of Leicester Museums. Um, writhing figures are tormented um, in the churned up mud of this rather hellish scene and in the background, uh, the dark night sky, uh, an eclipsed sun, eclipsed sun, a portent of doom, and uh, a plume of smoke, perhaps indicating an exploding shell or a falling comet. So a very, very disturbing, deeply uh, expressionist scene and one which um, uh, would have certainly inspired uh, Neuschel to look inside himself and produce very emotional and powerful works. Neuschel also met uh, Artur Segal and attended the art classes which the older man ran. And here a fantastic uh, photograph of um, an evening party um, held uh, under the auspices of the uh, November group. If you cast your eye to the upper right hand corner, you'll see a man dressed in um, a Piero's outfit with a conical white hat. Um, next to him on the left, dressed in a, a white top, is Ernst Neuschel with his arm around Taka Taka. And surrounding them are a wonderful um, gang of individuals, some including uh, November Group artists, the identities of whom sadly I, I don't know. So one of, one of the wonderful um, uh, times of entertainment, pleasure and inspiration that Neuschel uh, partook in with Taka Taka dur during this time. So uh, a fantastic window um, into that life. Thanks to the Norland family for uh, supplying me with this, this detailed um, high res image. Thank you for that. Um, we now look at uh, a wonderful double uh, photograph. Um, <clears throat> one of Neuschel's most ambitious uh, canvases, um, Taka Taka Dancing. Uh, from uh, 1926. Um, the importance Neuschel placed on this painting <clears throat> is shown um, with the photograph on the left, which shows uh, Taka Taka in very meditative mode, sitting on a raised wooden platform, and Neuschel um, cultivating the image of a, a modern uh, urban uh, man, a modern urban artist in his white shirt and tie, rather similar to some of the self-portraits with um, painted by Anton Radescheidt, another a new objectivity artist. Um, so a, a wonderful um, dramatic image, uh, Neuschel fixing us with, with a determined stare. And on the right you can see 
um, the finished result, a, a fantastic um, ambitious canvas showing um, meditation and motion. Um, taka Taka um, stripped the waist, just simply clad, but in, in motion, wonderfully dancing, um, uh, captured in, in various um, uh, mid movements and holding uh, some of the masks which uh, may be uh, original uh, tribal artifacts from Java or in turn may have been um, designed uh, by Neuschel, uh, inspired by uh, original uh, Javanese um, carvings. So uh, a fantastic uh, painting and really richly indicative of, of the, uh, the love he had for Takataka Taka and the partnership that they shared. The year 1927, um, ushering in a major artistic breakthrough for Neuschel, um, he produced a number of works during this time <coughs> and participated in eight exhibitions, six of them in Berlin. Uh, 48 known press articles exist, so uh, he was really garnering uh, considerable attention during this period. Um, river traffic on the Elbe, uh, so this is barges on the Elbe. Um, Unloading cargo and building supplies provided Neuschel with a regular motif in his paintings. Honolulu Band, 1927. Uh, America gave jazz music to Germany and in the process transformed the country's cultural climate. Uh, Stephanie Muller asserts that American culture appeared as a beacon of modernity in Jazz and its dances administered the desired rupture with Germany's imperial tradition. Many saw jazz as representing the best of the United States, modernity and progress. According to Anton Gill, Berlin in 1927 is said to have had a thousand active jazz bands. Here are the drinkers from 1927 <clears throat> in the Lands Museum in Darmstadt. A tired, um, rather roué crowd um, at the end of a, a, a hard night's drinking. Um, a typical image in so many uh, hundreds of bars, clubs uh, throughout um, uh, German cities in the 1920s. Um, <clears throat> if you wanted your fill of uh, clubland thrills, of course, it was accompanied by alcohol uh, to give a wonderful extra uh, dimension, usually ending in a drunken dimension uh, of, of the night. This is uh, Mulatin from 1927. Paint what you see, not what you think you know, or what is expected of you. Neuschel was determined to follow this approach and no other. The title of this painting, Mulatin, with its deeply racist overtones, could never be used today, but its use was considered acceptable then. The image is one of smiling relaxation, perhaps different to the only two real attitudes of racism the sitter may have encountered in life. Despite 20s Berlin, being known as a worldly tolerant city. For Neuschel, the observation is the axiom, where the understated confident glance of the sitter is the focus of this powerful work. At the bar or rest, 1927. <clears throat> this was used as the cover image on the 2001 and 2002 catalogue of the Neuschel retrospective exhibition held at the Ostdeutsche Gallery in Regensburg. And so it's a, another tired crowd, with Neuschel including himself in the foreground, smoking, with a young woman in a white shirt, white blouse, uh, with eyes closed, uh, leaning into him. A beautiful construction of arms, heads and hands, bodies propped up, wine glasses pushed away, or people simply uh, staring into space at the end of another um, heavy, uh, uh, drunken night. So again, uh, Neuschel, matter of fact, in your face, observing life as he saw it, and he experienced it. The Chalk Shovelers in 1926. Again, the articulation of space and contrast and the rhythm of work characterizes uh, this painting uh, with the wonderful uh, swing shovel um, picked up by a crane and then dumped on the ground for the workers to fill as rapidly as possible, probably trying to keep desperately up with their, their quotas. 
but again, a, a sharp edged um, uh, image. Again, the contours um, very much a part of the uh, dynamic visual appearance of this work. Two scenes, um, uh, industrial work from 1928 on the left, shipyard 1928 on, on the right. Um, Neuschel at this time taking part in a number of exhibitions in German cities and in 1929 he became a member of the uh, Reich, Reich Association of German Artists. Here we have children from 1927 and sick girl 1929. Germany had suffered in the early 20s from the social and economic fallout from war and people's fortunes rose and fell on a changing and turbulent climate of great creativity but unnerving socio-economic and political instability. Fortunately enough these children seem to be well fed and they have shoes and warm clothes but again the uh, the aspect and the outlook for many families could be very very different. Uh, the sick girl with her rather mournful face is in contrast to the healthy faces on the left. Around the same time as uh, the above works, either 1928 or 29, Neuschel painted a cycle of paintings depicting women as modern figures in urban or private settings with friends or on their own. Within this grouping are a number of portraits of his wife Takataka, Taka, which are very frank in their depiction of relaxed sexual freedom and independence. This is uh, uh, my wife and a uh, young girl, 1927 or possibly 28. Um, Takataka Taka looks up rather sleepy as she lies in bed entwined in the arms of a blonde sleeping girl. Another work entitled, uh, a similar title, uh, Wife and Young Girl, uh, shows a Takataka Taka with a younger girl leaning back against her. Uh, the circumstances and genesis of the works are not known, but signify a resonant and charged individual agency of the subjects. Takataka and Neuschel's marriage, ultimately to be without children, seems to have been happy and undoubtedly richly creative for both, allowing for uh, supportive and uh, generous interactions and paintings such as this. Neuschel, in creating these works with the support of Takataka, produces an image of liberated modern sexuality in tune with the times, breaking free of the traditional prejudice and taboo of his pa parents' generation. Neuschel's gaze is male, but is possessed of a genuine fascination and absorption with the feminine, which occurs in varying degrees throughout his oeuvre, and at this time was a significant element in his wider mission as a Neue Sachlichkeit painter. The, the Berlin sculptor René Sintenis had entered into a marriage of convenience with her husband, who supported her financially, recognising her private identity as an independent gay woman artist. Lottie Lazerstein, in turn, had a close and fulfilling friendship and collaboration with her model Trouter Rose, describing her life and work in 1920s Berlin as my only reality. Here we have uh, a wonderful uh, painting from 1928, um, after uh, Stein became one of the first women cohorts to graduate um, from the Prussian Academy of Art. This is in my studio. Um, and it shows a trout to rose um, uh, leaning full length with uh, Lazerstein uh, patiently uh, observing and painting her. Uh, Lazerstein um, was so determined to create uh, an image of power and beauty that she kept her palette underwater so the paint wouldn't dry out. And the painting itself uh, on a small wooden panel uh, was kept in a specially humidified uh, chamber to slow the paint, the drying rate of the paint. In this painting, um, the chemist Hermann Heinz is uh, shown, uh, Neuschel avoiding the urge to amplify or satirise his sitter's traits, but simply following the Neue Sachlichkeit dictum of dispassionate observation, recording equally subtle indicators of status, the solid business suit and the watch chain, but also the instruments of science. Conrad Felix Müller had painted coal miners and their families from the Ruhr mining districts in the 20s, and Otto Dix had painted fierce, sometimes vicious portraits of actors 
dancers and those on the fringes of society with a skill akin to the detailed techniques of the old masters. Here at uh, Ugend, uh, society magazine uh, full of uh, light entertaining stories from uh, show business, uh, politics and um, other spheres. And it shows uh, Taka Taka um, in a wonderful uh, embroidered um, dress and with a thoughtful expression. Uh, Ugend um, had a constant stream of um, uh, various stories, uh, adverts and uh, images and filled the newsstands, one of a variety of magazines published by Allstein and other Berlin publishers. Here we have Gypsies uh, from 1929. So a moment of downtime in a traveling community's life. Um, the life of travelers was very, very harsh and they faced uh, attacks and discrimination and prejudice from many, many sides. So Neuschel's compassionate image um, is a welcome addition to uh, the canon of uh, uh, traveling and fringe and other communities uh, painted by Neue Sattlerkite artists at uh, this time. Negamutter, Black Mother from around 1931. Uh, the painting on the left shows a breastfeeding mother uh, in a green space, possibly an open park. Um, definitely a red flag to the National Socialists at this time who uh, would have sought out the painter and sought to, to discredit or destroy the painting um, if it had been on a public exhibition. It's a sharp observation lie, um, but again with a singular compassion and, and a kind of a, a monumentality to the figure. She's watchful, but almost a, a sculptural and the child um, gazing away, slightly surprised, but continues breastfeeding, a very normal uh, uh, activity. And um, another painting at the same time of the wider family uh, was shown in uh, various exhibitions, including in uh, Ausig. In 1931, uh, Neuschel took over the chair for drawing and painting at the City Art School in Charlottenburg. He produced a number of works in 1932-33, including Confrontation uh, on the left and Workers' Council 1932-33 on the right. Uh, both works reflect Neuschel's anger and unease at the darkling clouds gathering in his country, at a time when the rights of ordinary citizens and workers alike were about to be smashed. He was painting canvases of workers striking, planning and standing up to fascism. At the stamp office. This is um, uh, in the uh, Pushkin Museum in, uh, in Russia. Um, a typical scene of workers queuing to get their work cards stamped, possibly to collect wages or uh, for opportunities to uh, pursue further employment shifts. If you were a political agitator or a troublemaker, you were often denied your stamp and denied work. In 1933, Neuschel became the last chairman of the November Group before it was banned by the National Socialists. And at his last exhibition in February 1933, in the House of Artists on Schoenberger Ufer in Berlin, the Nazis entered the gallery and confiscated the works on display, many of them subsequently destroyed. Immediately after these events, Ernst Neuschel fled to Czechoslovakia. Taka Taka and his later second wife, Crystal Bell, worked together to rescue his works in his Berlin studio and bring them to Ausig. By this time, sadly, the marriage of Neuschel and Taka Taka had sadly ended, 1933. On February the 3rd, 1934, um, Neuschel married his second wife, Crystal Bell, shown on the left here and on the right, uh, a painter and until 1933, a painting restorer at the Kaiser Friedrich Museum in Berlin, today the Bode Museum. On March the 25th, his first son, Till Peter, March the 25th, 1934, his first son, uh, Till Peter, was born, um, who later changed his name to Khalil. Uh, a wonderful image on the right, showing the sheer pleasure and joy of a young first motherhood. In 1934, mid-1934, 
Noisha received an invitation from the International Union of Revolutionary Artists in uh, Russia to visit, exhibit and work in the Soviet Union. So on September the 6th, 1935, uh, Neuschel and Crystal traveled to Moscow with 40 works that were created uh, between 1929 and 34 for exhibition. And they initially lived in the Metropole Hotel, but later in their own apartment and fruitful contact was established with other artists living in Moscow at the time. Neuschel was enthusiastic about what he experienced and especially about the people he got to know. Pravda reported positively about his solo exhibition in Moscow and Neuschel received a number of commissions and invitations to travel the country. Some elements of the Soviet press even began to proclaim him one of the finest painters of socialist realism. Neuschel visited the town of Elektrostal, an industrial centre lying 36 miles east of Moscow. The name changed to Zatisha in 1938 means electric steel and derives from the high quality steel manufactured there. It represented modern steel making in Russia and had specialist steel making shops, electric furnaces and rolling mills. So on the left, by his machine from 1936, shows a Russian mechanic, very much um, an ideal uh, Stakhanovite worker inspired by uh, the Russian legendary worker Alexei Stak Stakhanov. These workers took pride in their ability to regularly exceed their production targets by working harder and more efficiently than their comrades, thus strengthening the socialist state. And uh, workers examine a production plan to keep on top of their schedule on the painting uh, on the right, again from the same year. Steel machine, steel workshop, again from the same year, showing uh, two workers uh, just pausing uh, to look directly at the artist, uh, their managers keeping a watchful eye in uh, the overhead uh, platform ob observation deck above them and behind in the background. Among other, other things, um, Neuschel was invited by uh, the Kremlin to paint a double portrait of the head of state, uh, Josef Stalin, and uh, uh, Dimitrov, uh, George Dimitrov, the head of the Communist International, or the Comintern. Um, he was the Bulgarian leader who had been acquitted at the Reichstag um, trial after the Reichstag uh, fire in Berlin. Apparently during the completion of the portrait, Neuschel was ordered to paint Stalin, the shorter man, to appear at the same height as uh, Dimitrov, and Stalin even ord ordered him to paint back um, uh, progress that he'd made after uh, Dimitrov was able to sit for much, much longer periods. So Stalin uh, re being rather petty and annoyed at the progress of the other man. During the war, in order to placate their allies, the Soviets disbanded the Comintern and the portrait was cut in half to disassociate Dimitrov from Stalin. I don't, I don't have an image of the actual double portrait, but these sketches uh, survive of the working process. On January the 1st, 1936, Neuschel became a member of the Moscow Artists Union and the Union of Soviet Artists. Um, but shortly afterwards, Neuschel received a friendly warning from Andrei Bubnov, uh, the People's Commissar for Popular Education, um, to leave Moscow as soon as possible. Uh, the political winds had changed. So he returned to, uh, uh, to Ausik and uh, became active in uh, communist circles, uh, attending meetings, going on marches, and having his work published on the front cover of the Red Flag, um, the Northwest uh, uh, edition of the uh, uh, communist broadsheet. So uh, very much a, a worker with uh, clenched fists. Um, again, uh, into the popular front goes the slogan. Um, so the worker is uh, ready to go into the factories, um, but also come out on strike and uh, be very much in solidarity with his uh, comrades. In February 1936, after his return to Ausig, Neuschel lectured on the Soviet Union and Die Welt uh, reported positively on his stay. Um, in 1937, his, the last exhibition uh, in Ausig, which Neuschel would produce, took place. But during this exhibition, two of his paintings were slashed with knives and defaced with swastikas. You can see two of the paintings here of striking workers on the left and industrial 
um, gas storage tanks on the right with shadowy uh, figures gathered perhaps in also in strike uh, but with savage slashed canvases um, uh, ruining the works and a grim foretaste of of what was to come had he stayed so uh, Neuschel um, he left his hometown Ausig forever and moved with his family to Prague um, just before the Czechoslovak border were, was annexed by Hitler's Germany and declared the new uh, Reichsgau Sudetenland in the following year. So 1937-39 spent in Prague. Um, he became a member of the Oskar Kokoschka Club um, and gave lectures on degenerate art. He portrayed the Czech president uh, Edvard Benesch three times and um, he tried constantly to make the best of a difficult situation. Uh, other artists in the Oskar Kokoschka Club included the Dresden sculptor Greta Klopfleisch, the Munich anti-war artist Johannes Kurtz, and the photographer John Hartfield. Here, a Neuschel's portrayal of uh, the Czech president uh, Edvard Benesch uh, from 1938. Self-portrait with his son, 1937. Um, Neuschel took enormous pleasure in his baby son and here uh, the little boy holds father's paintbrush as um, the work in, in question uh, slowly begins with a wonderful uh, slew of colours across the palette and uh, the child with a wonderful um, um, you know far away expression perhaps uh, looking on at the painting itself taking shape. Um, there are a number of family photographs uh, of Neuschel at this time um, dandling the little boy on his shoulders, walking in the countryside, uh, sitting together with uh, with his mother. So um, again, a wonderful time between very difficult, very harsh situations, finding pleasure in small things, um, finding time for family life when he could. In 1938, Neuschel was in a desperate situation. He was on the Nazis blacklist and um, threatened with extradition to the Third Reich from the Czech side. Uh, Kokoschka and others resolved to try to reach England, their op options of escape rapidly shrinking. Um, eventually, uh, through connections uh, with the British Labour Party, um, uh, Neuschel was able to emigrate with his family to England, uh, which was arranged in just a few days, and he left on the last train to leave, uh, the Nazis permitted to leave uh, Czechoslovakia. This was on March the 24th, 1939, and then um, begins the last phase of his life in England at 1939 to 1968. The family came to stay in Mumbles near Swansea in Wales. This was thanks to the intervention of this man, uh, shown in this portrait from 1939, uh, D.R or David Rees Grenfell, the Labour MP for Gower, between 1922 and 59. Known to many simply as DR, David Grenfell was born in Pennyroll in 1881 and began working life as a coal miner. He developed a passionate internationalist outlook, uh, speaking French, Spanish and German, and helped Neuschel uh, when he first arrived in Mumbles. Um, he accepted an offer from the MP to lodge with his, his brother, and they later moved to a house in Brooklyn Terrace in Mumbles. Uh, in May uh, 1939, Neuschel became a member of the Free German League of Culture in England, the Free German Artists Association. Uh, Crystal Neuschel, in a 1940 radio interview, praised the kindness of locals and spoke highly of Wales itself. The Rainbow, 1940, a deeply expressionist painting the rainbow shows a naked vulnerable figure, half kneeling, half prostrate on the ground, mouth gaping in a silent scream. Neuschel may be modelling the figure on himself, suggesting an indication of his state of mind. It's often the custom for sea travellers to embrace or kiss the ground after a long or perilous journey, yet this tormented figure seems to find the touch of the earth a source of pain and anguish. For Neuschel, the fate of his country, his loved ones left behind, and a deeply uncertain future were a source of silent pain. Nonetheless, uh, positive uh, images of the local uh, fishing and coastal communities um, found their way into Neuschel's practice. 
um, a cockle picker on the left and cockle woman, both from 1914, both in the collection of the Glyn Vivian Art Gallery in Swansea. He painted the coal miners, the steel workers uh, and the cocklers. Um, a special exhibition fe featuring 37 of his paintings uh, took place in 1940 at the Glyn Vivian, organised by the curator Grant Murray. And um, an article in the Swansea Press uh, from 20th of March 1940, uh, just initial GF, is something I'd like to quote from now. There are some extremely able industrial scenes painted in the USSR. One work which represents the combination of dinginess and embitterment which characterised Germany before the rise of the Nazis, SS Man and Prisoner, is noteworthy not only as a record, but also for the brilliantly drawn face of the prisoner, ascetic and contemptuous. I think, however, visitors will stay longest opposite a painting of two Klanethli steel workers whose, on whose faces the painter has united extraordinary delicacy and strength. Here, a portrait of uh, President Dr. Benesh, Czech president in exile, painted in 1943. Um, the rubble of destroyed hopes, uh, but the friendship of the two cities still extended, representing the buildings at the back, the spires of Prague, um, the Tower of uh, uh, Big Ben, the Houses of Parliament on the right. On June the 13th, 1943, Neuschel's second son, Misha, was born. Neuschel gave lectures on the history of art where he was particularly interested in its social aspects. In 1946, he decided to stay in England and moved to London with his family. As a rejection of the past, he decided to anglicise his name from Neuschel to Norland. The house in London, Hampstead, he lived until the end of his life, uh, was a source of great comfort to him. But he did make numerous trips in 1966, returning to Berlin for the first time in over three decades. There were seven solo exhibitions up until his death, and Ernst Neuschel died on September the 11th, 1968, at the age of 73. A brief look back at his artistic development and drawing the talk to a close. At the beginning of Ernst Neuschel's artistic activity, expressionism was still in vogue, with distorted forms and strident colours to amplify emotional states of mind. Neuschel, however, began to gravitate, we have seen, to more, towards the more concrete observational style of new objectivity. Women were his preferred topic at first, but gradually socially critical themes found their way into his range of motifs. He had initially painted drinkers or women from the demimonde, and then more and more often motifs from the world of work. He had the invitation to live and work in the Soviet Union. In Moscow, however, Neuschel was given the advice that he should not paint the workers in their current precarious situation of production targets, tough working conditions and low wages, but in the style of social realism, reflecting communism in an ideal state as favoured by the party. He refused, but that's not to say that some of his images are not without their own pleasures and simple things of life. Neuschel remained true to himself and continued to paint what he saw and not what he should see. Like many of his generation at the beginning of the 20th century, Neuschel had seen the horror and consequences of the Great War on European society and the resultant social change in the Weimar years. He sought to reveal the social reality of life as he saw it, such as in this painting, Farm Workers from 1935, face to face with his subjects. He was committed to shared social and cultural values to shape, he hoped, a better society. Post-war, his artistic direction moved further towards a stylized abstraction, but like other emigrants who had made forced journeys out of Germany, such as George Gross, Greta Klopfleisch, Lottie Lazerstein and many others, Neuschel found himself unable to regain the success he had formerly enjoyed. Nonetheless, he and his family had discovered a welcome and support on their arrival in England. In 1976 in London, the Campbell and Franks uh, gallery presented the exhibition Ernst Neuschel 1895-1968 New Objectivity and Social Realism. On the cover of the exhibition catalogue the painting uh, Samson II uh, from 1924. So a wonderful uh, powerful and, and dynamic um, visualization of 
Samson with his great strength destroying the temple, um, a fantastic image uh, and one uh, which um, uh, again resonates in the mind. In 1988 the Leicester uh, Museum and Art Gallery staged a retrospective exhibition with the support of the Neuschel Norland family and a number of key works were loaned for this exhibition and key acquisitions and purchases were made including the previously seen uh, Negermutter Black Mother from 1931. Here, uh, Till Peter Khalil, Khalil Norland, in his home studio of Oxford in 2012, with one of his paintings in the background, uh, a still from a short video um, on the website uh, www.germanexpressionismleicester.org. A number of videos made in which different academics, artists, and individuals from different walks of life or connected with the collection uh, discuss and react to artworks from. Uh, the Expressionist Art Collection at Leicester. Khalil was encouraged to take up art by his father and wrote in 1991 of Neuschel's artistic search to find the ideal within the real. In describing the process of artistic transformation, which saw a shift into semi and finally full abstraction during the 1950s and 60s, Khalil wrote, although he had lost faith in the value of the object for his own sake, he had kept faith in the value of his experience and in particular with his experience of the feminine. She became a favorite subject for him because of her ability to reveal the light of meaning to him. On the left, melancholy draped nude from 1954. On the right, the singing lutenist from 1963. Odalisks from 1960. And because the meaning of light threatens to dissolve the definition of the objective world, the line now gains importance. Taking its inspiration from the rhythm of the object's form, it develops beyond the limits of the object itself. Woman whose face is veiled, 1964. Khalil writes, once again, the world is just so, only this time, that is not made solid through the certainty of an objective truth, that is poised in a balancing act whose equilibrium depends on the sensitivity of life. In his last years, Neuschel's art became abstract. That is to say, he saw the play of reason and feeling as universal, that strong and coherent composition by which to order reality, which was already evident in his youth, informs the artist's work at his end. Here Neuschel um, with an abstract of his 1964, um, four years before his death, um, but again still painting, still questing, still searching for uh, inspiration and new artistic pathways of creativity, uh, deliberation and new ways to construct the world as he saw it. So to draw the talk to a close, uh, those works by the artists which have been acquired for the Leicester collection of German Expressionist and Related Art can be seen on display at the Leicester Museum and Art Gallery's Expressionism Gallery. The last and final images um, uh, on the left, uh, uh, Messias, which you've previously seen earlier from 1918, pur purchased at auction in, uh, in uh, 20, uh, tw 2006 and in um, uh, 20, uh, 2014, a wonderful donation from uh, Misha and Khalil together, uh, a painting from 1931, uh, the Schminkender, a uh, girl applying makeup, uh, a wonderful painting to close the Weimar years, um, a last defiant applying of some eyeshadow makeup lipstick to go out and live life on the town uh, before the destruction which was to come. Uh, so a wonderful life and we are deeply thankful to um, uh, the family for being so supportive for the donations of work to Leicester and um, uh, the wonderful uh, stories uh, which uh, are resident within the family and the remembrance and the tribute of course to Misha and to Khalil and to their father. Thank you. Simon, thank you so much. It was hugely interesting, intensely moving, and wow, what a life, what an extraordinary earth. Uh, would you like to stop screen sharing? Um, and hopefully we can carry on a little bit, although I'm aware that the night is drawing on, as they say. Do you want to just um, 
Stop. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Lovely. Um, good. I think the first, we've got some nice, nice comments coming in, but I think the first thing to do is to perhaps suggest that members of the family might like to say something. Um, all Norlan these days, and I don't know most of them personally, and as I say, absolutely no pressure, but I'm sure, you know, as perhaps a kind of counterbalance to um, uh, Simon's wonderfully measured and, and, you know, you come to it, Simon, don't you, with tremendous interest, but also a certain level of, of detachment and a sense of the wider context, which of course was hugely rewarding to listen to. But I wonder if anybody from the Lawland family would like to say anything. And indeed, if anybody else would like to either just um, unmute themselves, perhaps just actually put their virtual hands up or, or type in whatever they might want to ask. There is, I think, let's have another another 10 minutes or so. No, I can't believe there aren't any questions or, or comments. Uh, Fine, well, let me it's very in. nice to see a comment from Monica Petzl, an artist oh, yes, and indeed. printmaker, mm -hmm. who came to the Leicester Museum and did a wonderful uh, exhibition on the theme of, of dissent and displacement. So it's lovely to see um, Monica Petzl here uh, joining the, uh, the event this evening. Um, also, thanks everyone. Thanks to all of you who, who have come tonight. It's through your support that these events, um, you know, uh, get, get a wonderful uh, renewed interest and a greater following and the information spread far and wide. Um, it's, it's been a, a wonderful period in my life, if I may say, to have been the curator at Leicester Museums, a real privilege to work with the collections and also to, um, to meet uh, wonderful uh, members of and descendants of the families of the artists who whose work is within the collection. So the stories um, that uh, they can tell about these artists and the lives that they led are so moving, so thrilling and so, so exciting. Um, Nicola, do you want to unmute yourself? Um, Nicola Sherman would like to ask something. Um, yes, hello. Um, Sorry, I should start my, I'll just start my video. <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, Simon, thank you. Um, I have, having brought students to your um, gallery and seen those Neuschel works, um, I think it's really extraordinary. Um, not only that the, the, the way his um, painting uh, really shows this trajectory from expressionism to new objectivity and then the, re the socialist realism, extraordinary, but I, but specifically, you've, you've, you ended with, your, with that wonderful um, painting that you say was recently donated by the family with the, the girl putting on makeup. And it does, it does strike, um, highlight the fact that he seems to be one of the few male artists who takes an inside of you, such as we are quite used to seeing from some of the female artists, for instance, um, Lotta Lazerstein or Jeanne Mammon might be an example. Um, and I thought that was a really interesting new angle um, to see a male artist who isn't exploiting women in in the way in the in in the sort of social critique way that actually one gets quite used to in male Weimar artists. Um, and it's just extraordinary to see how much work there is of his um, in in the various collections. So um, thank you very much. I wonder, actually, Nicola, if I could just sort of chip in on the back of what you just said, because I was very struck looking at those wonderful photographs of him dancing with Taka Taka, that actually there's this kind of sexually ambivalent appearance mm. that clearly he mm. was And I think that probably has something to do, doesn't it? I don't know whether he was actually bisexual, but that sort of empathy and sympathy and that kind of non-exploitative approach mm. that you, you uh, quite rightly comment on, I think it probably has something you know, that's connected, isn't it? Um, Indeed, indeed. Um, I can't resist saying that Nicola and I have been in touch recently because she's doing some work on a, the, one of Otto Dix's sitters. I don't know whether you want to just say something, just in case anybody in the audience can throw further light on another extraordinary figure. Well, um, thank you, Monica, for mentioning that, Loam. I'm a little bit shy because I haven't um, got very far in my research, but I am very interested in tracing the experience in exile of... Um, 
the famous sitter are in the Otto Dix portrait of Sylvia von Harden. It's one of the it's one of the um, paintings by Otto Dix that gets reproduced over and over again for its typification of the uh, sort of ex uh, extreme liberated woman in um, Weimar Germany. And uh, it, 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 it so happens that um, Sylvia von Harden herself, a, a journalist and author, had a, a career um, in exile in Britain, writing for the German um, newspaper in exile, Die Zeitung. So I'm looking forward to looking through some of the some of the um, some of the issues in the British Library. Um, but if anybody, yes, if anybody in this audience um, knows of connections or letters or um, existing archives uh, that might um, bear some relation. I think by all accounts, it appears that she had a difficult time, as did most, as did many um, artists and writers in exile. So she wouldn't um, have been very well known, um, but nonetheless, she would have had a network um, of committed supporters, I think, amongst the diaspora, certainly. Um, thanks, Monica. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. It's another, you know, little hidden corner I was absolutely <laughs> astonished because I think all of you will recognise the painting of the woman with the wrinkled stocking. And anyway, it's a very famous, almost iconic Otto Dix painting. And who would have thought that the sitter actually ended up on these on these shores? Absolutely. Um, a question from Yona, I think for, uh, currently in Israel. How could the artist survive on his art alone? Yes, always a good question. Um, was, you know, does somebody have... Simon, I don't know if you have a sense of that, what the answer might be. I can't speak with any real authority on, on Neuschel's existence when he first came to England, but uh, I suspect he, he would have attempted to make contact with artists and, and uh, I think would have been helped by um, the MP when he first arrived, although he did say that he moved away from Mumbles and felt that... Um, he was unable to truly earn a living that he wanted, so uh, gravitated to Hampstead, to, to London. Um, it's Br Bridget, would you like to do, do unmute yourself? Yes, um, when the family came to Wales, um, Ernest painted portraits as piecework um, for the, the sponsor there. And when they came to London, they um, my parents-in-law and their companions bought the house in Hampstead and rented out rooms and um, Misha's mother worked as a, she, she was a trained picture restorer mm. and um, the, the, the family all helped with that well, not, not my husband but um, um, Halil helped with that and um, also Ben's mother and, um, and you know other members of the household contributed to the the um, household economy so Ernest was um, part of a communal effort but I have to say you know from my perspective it um, the idea of him as not exploiting women <laughs> isn't is a little bit <laughs> That's a, it's a little bit idealistic to put it like that. You know, he could enter into the world of, of women, but you know, the, from all accounts, he was extremely, um, um, as a friend put it, he said he was a Central European male. I think, Bridget, we're talking about the way he represents women rather than his attitude in real life. No. Well, fair enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, a, a, a moot, a moot point. It, it, um, when you're in the family and you you um you experience the the down the line of that um that attitude, as it were, we all we all had to grow away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm um, changing changing tack somewhat. I'm curious to know, given his Welsh connections, um, um, whether he actually ever encountered or had anything to do with Joseph Herman, who of course was there at much the same time, painting away in Swansea Valley. Did you I'm know of any evidence? No, I don't know. No. I don't know. I don't know. Um, mm, mm. And also I'm intrigued, uh, was it this one particular MP who was the kind of linchpin figure in securing, you know, his passage oh, to this yeah. country or were there other, did you know about the precise circumstances? Oh, I see. Well, my, 
my understanding of of the the path being smooth by one one of the one of the companions who was already in in the UK in 1938, and she was the one who um, found Ernest and Crystal a sponsor and got them a place to. And do you, to do live you know, do you know work. that person's name at all? Yeah, that that we knew her as Diddy. She was Edith Lustig, and she was one of his models. Right. Um, and she actually looked quite like Tucker Tucker. But um, yeah, she was she was a, a great lady and worked as a um, midwife and health visitor um, in all her long working life. Mm. <laughs> Fascinating. Um, any other questions? We've got lots of nice appreciative comments. Um, I'm also wondering, I mean, those dance photographs are so vivid. Um, does their partnership feature in histories of dance, I wonder? I, I don't know if you know the answer to that, but you know. Hmm. I think there are one or two, one or two um, publications, I think, uh, weren't there? And, and yeah. some historians mm -hmm. have, have um, made links. But to be honest, I'm 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 not fully versed in in dance history, so so. No, no, I wouldn't expect you to be. I'm just wondering if that's one place you know they sort of fit, but not 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 quite. I suspect. How very very fascinating. I mean, there's a book waiting to be written. I have to say, isn't there, Simon? Isn't there? <laughs> you know, so much more that could perhaps be pursued. Such rich material. Um, last chance, everyone. It is getting late, so we'll draw things to a close in a minute. Last chance to ask any questions or indeed to comment. Um, perhaps while you're thinking, um, I just mentioned a few little sort of um, things I've picked up on. Uh, you mentioned, you know, as ever with all these talks, um, names are mentioned and then, you know, you kind of make connections. I mean, Arthur Segal, for example, is really, really interesting. And indeed on the Insiders Outsiders YouTube channel is a recording by Imogen Wiltshire, who did her PhD on Arthur Segal. And indeed she also gave a talk just literally a few days ago in an online conference that I was involved with looking at him as an art, sort of his ideas about art as therapy, very interesting. Um, also um, John Hartfield, you'll be interested to know that John Hartfield's grandson, John Hartfield Jr. is actually going to be um, giving a talk with me sharing it on the 2nd of um, February this next this coming year so that will be advertised in due course um, and also closer to home I'd like to mention just really by coincidence I have to say that on this question of dance the next Insiders Outsiders event coming up on the 16th of December at um, six o'clock is a tribute to Kurt Jus who some of you may know is a pioneering modernist a dance theatre choreographer and indeed dancer himself and his ballet use that came over in the first instance to Dartington College. Another interesting topic for further explanation, but that's going to be, as I say, on the 16th, in other words, next week at 6pm, and it is on the Insiders Outsiders uh, website. And last, yes, publicly, absolutely, um, it's been recorded, technology permitting, I do believe it has been recorded, and I, I certainly hope so. Um, Oh, Alistair, do you want to just before I, I conclude, do you, did you want to add something? Alistair, would you like to um, unmute yourself? Well, not really, only to say. Um, Hi, did you say you'd found some material? How, 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 how wonderful to see Ernst's work mm. in this context. And, um, and thank you, Bridget. For taking part and telling me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad obviously family members are here, that, that, that's lovely. Um, so yes, no, just in answer to the question, has it been recorded? Yes, it has. And what we do give us just a few days, hopefully less than a week, and the recording will be uploaded onto the Insiders Outsiders YouTube channel for, well, the foreseeable future, if not exactly posterity. What I think I'm going to do, given that I haven't actually had a chance to type in a lot of the links, I will send up a follow up email to everybody who's attended tonight, uh, giving them the various links, both to Simon's earlier book, to the um, interview with Khalil on the German Expressionist um, Leicester website and indeed to the Insiders Outsiders anthology and um, everything else that I think might be relevant. So it remains for me to thank everybody for attending, particularly the family and our sincere condolences. Really, we're still reeling with disbelief and, and shock. Simon and I, I really mean that. And Simon, 
a lovely talk as ever, you know, sensitive, well-informed, eloquent, lovely. Thank you very, very much indeed. So I think enough for one night. I wish you all well and hope to see you at some future events. A very good night. Thank you.